Good morning. All right, folks. Thanks for checking in with me. I want to show you the shop. I uh, I got it cleaned up quite a bit. You know, it's still not as nice as some of those shops you see on YouTube, but that's okay. This is the old jarhead shop, and uh, it's meant to get messed up. That's the whole point of having a shop, right? Anyhow, um, here's the shop. So now you can see. Oh my gosh. We've got floor. I still have some work to do in here, but for now we're going to be good. You know, my main project that I really need to get to, and so I'm going to start on that now, is getting this uh, this little piece of walnut done. So I've got to finish cutting this bow tie in, get that cut in, get that glued in and set. Then I can cut this end off and set that aside to stitch it back together. And then take this piece off where the customer wants it, flatten one side and finish it for them. After we get that planed and sanded, we'll do some Keta dye on there, and then uh, I'm actually going to coat it with uh, Park Super Glaze. I happen to have some Park Super Glaze left over, I, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. It's a one coat and done type thing, so it'll look really nice, it'll be beautiful, and I think he'll be real happy with it. So when I get that done, then I've got to work on this guy right here. So that's the coffee table I'm building, so we'll plane that all down, smooth it out. I should tell you, no one's taught me how to do this. Something I just started trying to figure out on my own. Uh, I haven't taken a shop class since I was probably 11 years old. But I think maybe there's a message there. You don't have to be a professional woodworker to do these kind of things. You just gotta dive in and do it. And I have found that I learn as I go. I, honestly, anybody can do this. It just takes patience and willingness to learn so and and you know if you've got suggestions out there that would help me do this better hey i'm all ears i'm all ears i will listen to anybody definitely need a, a corner chisel that's pretty clear okay we're getting there a lot of work but um uh, you might be able to see that this bow tie is almost all the way in here you can see now that guy is it's pretty tight I want that to fit nice it's just slightly proud that's okay Okay, so now we're going to glue it in place. So we're just going to go ahead and soft it with some glue. And then I'm going to spread it around with my finger. Soft it in there. And then a lot of times what I'll do when I'm in a situation like this, I got a little bit of a gap, not much, just a little bit. So to start out, I'll go ahead and I'll make sure that my glue gets all the way in those cracks. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of help it in a little bit. And then, uh, and then when I sand it, I'll actually get it to where it's really close. And then you know, after planing, and what I'll do is I'll sand it when the glue is still just a little bit tacky. And what that'll do is it'll take the, the sawdust and it'll mix it in with the glue itself. So that's it for now. We'll let that sit. I probably should put something underneath it just to make sure it don't glue itself to the work surface. So I'm going to take care of that real quick. So one of the things you saw me using in there was this guy. It's my mallet. You know, the funny thing is, is I made this originally for the grandkids. Um, it's just two pine saplings, right? One that was about two inches 
and then one about one inch and I literally just bored a hole through it made a tenon on this piece here on the handle and I've actually come to like this rough thing I need to get a real mallet for when I'm doing uh, chisel work you know I need a, a good hardwood um, and I, I see them online all the time one of these days I'm gonna get one if you've got one you really like let, let me know okay since the holding force in a bow tie like this is in its wedge shape the glue is really just to secure it to the to the piece itself and so I believe this glue is fairly dry. It's had a couple few hours to dry. So I think it'll be fine for me to go ahead and cut this end off. So I'm gonna give that a try. And again, the shape of the bow tie is what holds things, not the glue itself. So another thing about bow ties is you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure that the grain is, is perpendicular to the check. So if you look here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but the grain runs this way. That's where the strength is. If I had turned it the other way, it could pull apart. Because this is longitudinal to the check or perpendicular to the check, then it won't pull apart. So the wedge shape keeps this piece from opening up anymore. And the direction of the grain gives the holding power in that piece right there. So we're gonna go ahead and see about cutting that off. Uh, it'll be interesting to see because I did leave this proud so I'm going to have to be careful with the way I cut that off, but we're going to we're going to give it a try and I might flip it over to do it the other way. We'll see. Sweaty work. I, I had to shop at 65. I bumped it to 67, and you know, this back room got a little warm. I think just from running that big Makita and, and running back and forth. So let me show you what we got here. Now you can see the marks from that planer bit. That's okay. We'll take some uh, 80 grit or 60 grit. We'll knock that down. We'll get down. You got a little bit of planer snipe. Very little. You'll, you won't notice it when it's done. And so that's pretty much there. Um, that's a nice piece. Not sure which side. I think this is the side we're going to use because it's got that the more hard in it. And I've got the bow tie. You can see what I was talking about a little bit, a little bit of a crack around it. But that's okay. We're going to fill that with sawdust and glue when we get down and and sand it. So we'll we'll put some more glue in here and let it tack up, and then we'll sand in. Uh, some sawdust in there and then I just have to cut one side and that would leave the live edge and then I'll, I'll probably round this off here um, a little bit and and match that live edge you know so what I do is I just take a 40 grit grinder and I'll work that around and and try to keep this live edge as, as best I can but kind of work it around there and take that point off and of course we got to peel all the all that uh, inner bark off okay so anyway there we go um, work on the flat side cut that flat round out that edge a little bit leave this end sharp because and then I'll have to fill that check with some epoxy uh, that's okay we just dam it up and and actually on something that's small like that I usually just use five minute epoxy it actually works really well mix it up if you got it all dammed up really well drop that in there it'll be fine and then uh, and then we sand the heck out of it, get her down to 220, really make it smooth. And then we'll hit it with the Keta dye, about probably two coats of brown Keta dye. 
um, what that'll do is it'll it'll blend those colors a little bit together like my bar top you know so you'll get something like that piece there that I was making for a mantle that I'm gonna change okay time to take a break <laughs> 